Good day everyone, I am Frederick Salimi, Director of PMC of Pro. This e-course will be uploaded in a training workspace of EPC365. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, send us an email given in description. Have a good day and talk to you later. A brief description about my qualification and experience. Uh, I have a master's degree in dependability, which covers safety, reliability, maintainability, and availability. I also have a BS degree in process control and instrumentation. I worked several years with engineering companies like Technib and operators like Total. I was involved in pre-project, uh, feed, detail design, construction, and operation. Today we discuss about Process Safety Management, PSM. This is a generic version and will be customized for your project or for your installation. This course takes one day. We give you access to EPC365 training monitor for discussion. This program is well suited to plant managers, uh, operation managers, project engineers, engineer manager, lead engineer, HSC design engineer, process safety engineers, and HSC managers. The objective of this course is, is to give a practical understanding of process safety management for oil and gas installation. We discuss about process safety management elements as per CCPS. Uh, as you know, uh, any uh, management system is composed of elements and here we have 20 elements as per CCPS. Uh, commitment to uh, process safety, uh, there are five elements. Uh, understanding hazard and risk, two elements. Management or uh, managing the risk, nine elements. And learn from the experience, four elements. For all of them, there are expectations, and uh, we will discuss it in the following slides. The first element of commitment to process safety is uh, process safety culture. What is process safety culture? It is the combination of group values and behaviors that determine the manner in which process safety is managed. Uh, it explains how we do things around here, what we expect here, and how we behave when no one is watching. The following uh, four essential features will help uh, achieve and maintain a sound process safety culture. First is establish process safety as a core value. Second, provide a strong leadership. I will explain in the next, next slide what is leadership. Establish and enforce high standards of performance. Document the process safety culture, emphasis and approach. So let's discuss, discuss about leadership and uh, its expectation. First is establish and implement the process safety management system. Second is management to demonstrate commitment to process safety performance through visible participation in process safety issues. Measurable objective with appropriate action plan to be set by managers individual and team contribution to process safety performance shall be recognized process years shall exist for the transfer of good process safety practices and technology and finally the selection of contractors shall include consideration of their process safety performance so here the commitment and leadership here, if you see here, it is by uh, the top management of uh, managers of company, basically uh, by and by uh, they will define the policy and a strategic objective, 
organization and resourcing, evaluation of risk management, planning, standard implementation, monitoring, and then management review. And this is based on continuous improvement. I'll show you later more how it works. Element two is compliance with the standards. A standards is a system to identify, develop, evaluate, disseminate, and provide access to applicable standards, code, regulation, and law that affect process safety. The following uh, four essential uh, features will help to comply with uh, standards. One, ensure consistent implementation of the standard system. Second is identify uh, standards uh, compliance is needed. Involve competent personnel. Ensure that standards uh, compliance uh, practices remain effective. The third uh, element is process safety competence, means uh, developing and maintaining uh, process safety competency by three interrelated actions. Continuously improving knowledge and competency, ensuring that appropriate uh, information is available to people who need it, consistently uh, applying what has been learned, and the, finally, the process safety competency should be based on knowledge that is supported by facts and any significant improvement in the body of the knowledge should lead to a better decision, thereby reducing the risk and improving performance. Fourth uh, element is workforce involvement. Workforce involvement uh, provides a system uh, for enabling the active participation of company and contractor workers in design, development, implementation, and continuous improvement of management system. The following essential features should be considered. Ensure consistent implementation, involve competent personnel. Fifth element is a stakeholders outreach. A stakeholder outreach is a process for seeking out individuals or organizations that can be affected by company operations and engaging them in a dialogue about process safety. The following essential feature should be considered. Ensure consistent, uh, consistent implementation involve competent personnel, keep practices effective. Element six is process knowledge management. The knowledge element uh, focuses on information that can easily be recorded in documents, such as technical documents and specifications, engineering drawings and calculations, specifications for design, fabrication, and installations of process equipment, or other written documents such as uh, material safety data sheet, MSDS. The term uh, process knowledge will be used to refer uh, to this collection of information. The managed, uh, management system should include the essential features listed below. Ensure consistent implementations. Define the scope. Truly document uh, chemical reactivity and, and incompatibility hazards. Assign responsibilities to competent personnel. Element seven is hazard identification and risk analysis uh, HERA. Hazard identification and risk analysis is all activities involved in identifying hazard and evaluating risk at facilities for their life cycle. The following essential features should be uh, considered. Document uh, the intended risk management system. Integrate HERA activities into the life cycle of projects and processes. 
clearly define the analytical scope of HERA and ensure adequate coverage, determine physical scope of the risk system, involve competent personnel, make consistent risk judgment, and verify the HERA practices remain effective. Now I show you uh, normally in uh, oil and gas uh, installation is this very well uh, work and uh, this is uh, really to understand hazards for those people who are uh, for operation uh, they have to understand that there are there were certain uh, risk analysis and hazard identification has been done and they have to uh, find out where these documents are and these documents normally uh, I, I, uh, I give you a brief description and we have the e-courses uh, here at the end of this uh, e-course uh, there are you can see there are uh, Hazid, Hazob and Seal e-courses that we gave here there is an action tracking system and there will be some bow tie analysis and the bow tie analysis uh, even uh, can be after the definition of risk assessment here uh, in this project they did the cure it on certain um, project they do the uh, preliminary risk analysis and detailed risk analysis based on the scenario of the risk and company matrix and then they do the uh, bow tie for risk reduction workshop uh, environmental impact assessment and then alert demonstration this how to reduce the risk and, uh, and what are the important things in the system so the information about this you can find it in safety concept or safety dossier HSE case and EIA so these are the documents the informations are there and you have to be uh, informed that uh, the regulatory authority for permitting for the first oil they have to have a HSC case and they have to understand the risk and you most of the companies they give this information so uh, operators should know that these informations are there there are functional requirement for example there are asset integrity assurance which covers the performance standards I will uh, go through this a little bit later so the important thing is uh, to have this information and understand they are there and where to find them element 8 is operating procedures operating procedures are written instructions including procedures that are stored electronically and printed on demand that list the steps steps for a given re, uh, task describe the manner in which uh, the steps are to be performed good procedures also describe uh, process hazards very important tools and protective equipment and control in sufficient detail that operator understand the hazard and can verify that the control are in place and can confirm that process response uh, in an uh, expected manner. Procedures should also provide instruction for troubleshooting when the system does not respond as expected. Procedures uh, should specify when an emergency shutdown should be expect, uh, executed and should also address special situations such as uh, temporary operations with a specific equipment item out of service. Element 9, uh, safe for practices. Uh, procedures uh, are generally divided in three categories. One, operating procedures govern activities that generally generally involve uh, producing a product. Maintenance procedures generally involve testing, inspecting, uh, calibrating, maintaining, uh, or repairing equipment. And safe work procedures, uh, which are often supplemented with permits, that is a checklist that include an authorization steps, uh, fill the gap between the other two sets of procedures, 
safe work practice help control hazards and manage risk associated with non-routine work. Element 10 is about asset integrity and reliability of safety critical elements. Uh, those elements uh, whose failure will, will uh, either cause or contribute to a major accident and the purpose of which is to prevent or limit the effect of major accident. Normally we identify them by bow tie and the, I show you uh, what is bow tie. Normally we have a hazards and we have here the barriers and these barriers are layer of protection here. We call them prevention and then if they don't uh, they can, if they don't work failure of them it will be a release of hydrocarbon and after that there are other layer of protection for control mitigation and emergency response and if those do, will not work there will be an impact on safety environment and asset so these barriers we have to assure the integrity of them for the life cycle of the plant so the uh, as i said this is identifications of the uh, scenario based uh, risk assessment uh, studies that we do and uh, normally they uh, we have to assess their interaction with other safety critical elements we have to write the performance standards for them which uh, covers functionality availability reliability survivability and interaction and uh, also uh, we have to define operational means of assurance this uh, performance standard and means of assurance uh, there is an e-course at the end of this uh, uh, this presentation that we gave for uh, another project that we did for uh, life cycle management of safety critical element for a project in algeria so when you define the performance standard, then it goes to computer computer's maintenance management system, and then they will go for compliance and assurance as one of the things here, integrity dashboards. And then here uh, we have to uh, assure that uh, this system is, is working. So here normally assurance project uh, asset integrity and reliability is you know you have the objective here we define the performance standard we define the safety critical element then we do the organization and operational plan uh, we have the competency here inspection test repair and then we do the compliance assurance we buy kpi monitoring or audit and then uh, risk monitoring is incident investigation lesson learned and review feedback and improvement from management of change and then this goes for the continuous improvement uh, for this process this is a, a typical uh, uh, a startup readiness and operation readiness and considering asset integrity normally here is a responsible department and a accountable and the consultant and this is the progress but these uh, items from asset integrity she, she, uh, will be monitored for example one is uh, sc register performance standard written scheme of examination inspection policy and inspection strategy about uh, asset integrity assurance uh, we should have inspection plan inspection procedures inspection test list uh, defect management procedure, corrosion management plan, pipeline picking survey if you have pipeline, and uh, baseline survey, corrosion risk assessment, uh, corrosion studies, uh, dead leg register. I uh, added a uh, accident about the uh, uh, dead leg register, uh, dead leg in uh, uh, in United States and. Uh, and lesson learned by uh, CSP, uh, HPLP interface uh, register, and uh, finally safe operating envelope register. So all of these things uh, should be, uh, the progress will be monitored for a startup readiness and operational readiness. 
Element uh, 11, uh, Contractor Management. This element addresses the selection, use, and monitoring of contracted services. The following essential features should be considered. Ensure consistent implementation. Identify when contractor management is needed. Involve competent personnel. Ensure that the practices remain effective. Element 12 is training and performance assurance. Training is practical instruction in job and task requirements and methods. It may be provided in a classroom or workplace or uh, an e-course like this. And its objective is to enable workers to meet some minimum initial performance standards. Performance assurance is the means by which workers demonstrate that they have understood and the, tra and the training and can apply it uh, in practical situations. Performance assurance is an ongoing process to ensure that workers meet performance standards and to identify where additional training is required. Element 13, uh, management of change, very important. Uh, the management of change element includes a review and authorization process for evaluating proposed adjustment to, adjustment to facility design, operations, organization, or activities prior to implementation to make certain that no unforeseen uh, new hazards are introduced and the risk of existing hazards to employee, public, and environment is not increased. It also includes steps to ensure that potentially affected personnel are notified of the change and that pertinent documents such as procedures, process safety knowledge, and other key information are kept up to date. Element 14, operational readiness. The readiness element ensures that the shutdown process are verified to be in a safe condition for a restart. This element addresses uh, a startup from all type of shutdown conditions and uh, consider the length of time the process was in shutdown condition. In addition to the shutdown duration, this element considers the type of work that may have been con uh, conducted on the process uh, during the shutdown period to help focus the readiness review prior, prior to a startup. So I show you here a typical uh, checklist uh, that, uh, that, that it will be used for the uh, uh, a startup readiness and operational readiness. And uh, as I said in integrity, here is uh, responsible people, accountable and consulted and informed. And this is a progress and priority. But here we have to have all of these things uh, in place, uh, which I uh, uh, say about the policy should be defined. Uh, plans and procedures, uh, safety case uh, must be there. Uh, and uh, maximum allowing uh, pressure uh, design should be updated. Incidents review reporting procedures, audit and uh, compliance plan, emergency response plan, medical for security plan procedures, and for environment uh, EIA plan uh, procedures, emission monitoring, effluent monitoring, waste management, and condensed spill uh, response. So, and the same thing is for other. Uh, uh, other uh, topics, and uh, I give you a typical example, HS, HSSC, uh, we discuss about this, they will be for operation and uh, production and asset integrity, this I discussed uh, what should be there about safety, uh, safety critical register, performance standard written scheme of examination, about maintenance and uh, project interface, logistic and HR. So all of these things is uh, 
really to be monitored, but the main things is uh, health and safety, security and environment and asset integrity, uh, which is uh, uh, part of the uh, uh, process safety management. Element 14, operation readiness. Uh, records should be maintained concerning readiness activities so that the performance and efficiency can be periodically evaluated. Ensure consistent uh, implementation. Determine the type and trigger for readiness practices. Determine the scope of readiness review. Involve competent personnel. And ensure that the readiness uh, practices remain effective. Here is a typical uh, uh, shutdown readiness and operation readiness, and here is the progress and the priorities, uh, and uh, here is uh, responsible, accountable people, and the type of the checklist is, for example, in operation management is about asset management system, interface management pro process, action tracking, lesson learned, and best practices, operation philosophy, asset register, OPEX structure and uh, forecast, OPEX model, current year budget, uh, etc. The same thing for operation activities, uh, operating manual, important alarm management procedures, ESD procedures, uh, a startup uh, procedure, a routine operation, a shift handover procedure, and uh, lab maintenance and set point alarm uh, trip register, training uh, uh, simulator, and DCC uh, management, uh, the document hand handover to operations, etc. So these are the things that uh, uh, will be uh, as a checklist, the progress and priority will be defined. Element 15, uh, conduct of operations. Conduct of uh, operation is the execution of, uh, of operational and management tasks in a deliberate and a structured manner. Workers at every level are expected to perform their duties with uh, alertness, uh, due thoughts, uh, full knowledge, sound judgment, and a proper sense of pride and accountability. 16 is emergency management. Emergency management, this is normally well done by HSE management system. Uh, there are certain uh, things uh, in process safety management system is the same as HSE management system. This is emergency management, planning for possible emergency, providing resources to execute the plan, uh, uh, practicing and continuously improving the plan, and training on informing employee, contractors, neighbor, local authorities on what to do, how they will be notified, and how to report an emergency and effectively communicating, uh, communicating with uh, stakeholders in the event of an incident uh, does occur. So this is the, the procedures is normally if our HSE management system is the same things. Uh, emergency uh, management uh, strategy, plan for uh, ER, we call them ER, and uh, prepare for ER, these ER training drills and uh, feedback and lesson learn, and finally execute ER. Element 17 is incident investigation. Uh, incident investigation is a process for reporting, uh, tracking, and investigating incidents that include a formal process of investigating incidents, including stuffing, documenting, and tracking investigations of process safety incidents. Now I show you an incident investigation. It is um, part of element of HSE management system. Uh, that that is uh, learning from the uh, from experience incident investigation you have 
and in this, uh, you have the incident investigation reporting. Basically, it is notify, investigate, report, and go to the database of the company. And this give a feedback, a lesson learned about emergency response, so define a strategy, plan, prepare, and, uh, and a lesson from this. And then it goes to the uh, HEM process, which is hazard and effect management process, identification uh, of the hazards, assessment of the risk, eliminations of the risk. So these are uh, the things that we come as a memory of the company from accidents and lesson learned. So you see here it exists and it is the same thing for the uh, process safety. So it is, I, in my experience, most of the companies, they do it very well, especially in operation. The lesson learned from accidents and near misses is all well managed. Element 18 is uh, measurements and uh, metrics. Uh, a combination of leading a, and uh, lagging indicators is often the best way to provide a complete picture of process safety effectiveness. KPI should be linked to safety critical elements and verification activities and hydrocarbon releases. Example of uh, areas that uh, might be uh, subject to monitoring via KPIs is SCE maintenance, is blockage risk assessment, verification scheme, inspection and assurance, and completion of uh, compliance audit for the key risk control system. Verification finding, defining roles and responsibility, which metrics data should be uh, collected and how often, and the necessary technical expertise of personnel is critical to having an effective uh, metrics uh, system. So measurement and metrics record uh, should be maintained uh, concerning metric activities so that performance uh, can be periodic, uh, periodically evaluated, establish consistent implementation, determine triggers for metric collection and reporting, ensure that the scope of metric is uh, appropriate and involve competent personnel and keep a metric pra uh, practice uh, effective. Element 19, auditing. The audit element is intended to evaluate whether management system are performing as intended. The audit element should be documented to an appropriate level of detail in a procedure or a written program addressing the general management system aspects. Element 20 is management review and continuous improvement. Uh, management review is a routine evaluation of whether management systems are performing as intended and produces, producing the desired result as efficiently as possible. Normally, this is uh, leadership and commitment, and then you do the policy and strategic objective and uh, evaluations and risk management, uh, planning, standards and procedures, implementation, monitoring. And then you do the audit and assessment, self-assessment, and then management review. It can be monthly and uh, also yearly. And this is management corrective actions. And this will be by supervisory corrective actions or uh, defining a strategic objective or revising the policy or putting the organization resources for continuous improvement in process safety management system. Now I give you a EPC 365 uh, training work cases. Uh, you can uh, go to process safety management system training. In fact, for each element, uh, there is a workspace which covers uh, like this. And in this uh, workspace, uh, the company put all the information uh, about, uh, about operation, design, uh, documentation, etc. Then, uh, then we create an e-course and then we put it in discussion here. Uh, we have also a system of planning and, uh, and uh, managing the deliverables for the process safety management system for each element because we, we consider each element as a project. 
So this is an example of the of the discussion uh, from uh, and and we put the training here and the staff will give answer and then we coach them and we we see if they if they understood certain certain things and then report it to the managers. I added a CSP video. Uh, this is an accident uh, that uh, at, uh, took place in the Valero refinery in Texas. And it has a very good recommendation of CSP about uh, uh, dead legs and uh, winterization and uh, how to uh, manage the process safety uh, to avoid accidents like this. Thank you for your attention. If you have any question uh, about uh, process safety management uh, system, please send us an email to pmc at epc365.com. We have two websites, one is in French, the other one is in English. Uh, there are request forms and you can send us, uh, uh, send us your questions, then we will uh, get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much and talk to you in our next workshop. The CSB found that lack of winterization procedures also contributed to a massive fire that took place in 2007 at the Valero refinery near Sunray in the Texas Panhandle. The fire occurred in a unit that used large amounts of high pressure liquid propane. Years earlier, the unit had been reconfigured, creating a dead leg or a section of piping without any flow of liquid. Dead legs are particularly vulnerable to the hazards of freezing, and the dead leg at Valero was blocked on one side by a leaky valve. These two serious accidents illustrate the importance of establishing effective winterization programs at refineries, chemical plants, and other facilities that handle hazardous materials. The CSB has established key winterization safety lessons that facilities should follow. Facilities should effectively identify and address the risk of freeze-related hazards to piping and process equipment through process hazard analyses, management of change evaluations, pre-startup safety reviews, and operating procedures. Create and implement a winterization checklist to ensure that their plant and process systems are ready for cold weather. Establish a formal written freeze protection program. Survey piping systems for dead legs and ensure they are properly isolated, removed, or winterized.